Welcome back to another episode of The Rest is Cut. In this episode I'm going to make a farmhouse table. I'm starting with knotty pine. It matches the legs that were given to me. I'm making this table for a friend of mine. She has a place where she does weddings at her home in upstate New York in a barn. So this table will be used sort of a centerpiece in that barn. And she picked up the legs from tablelegs.com. And since the legs are knotty pine, you see them there, I decided to use knotty pine for the rest of the apron. Just taking a measurement that's 7 inches, so i got to remember to deduct that 7 inches from the overall length. The frame is going to be about 10 feet. The overall table is going to ultimately be about 11. And I just kind of went on feel. I don't even remember exactly the final dimension of the table. It's about 11, 11.5. And uh, there you see I'm cutting both sides of the, what's the apron or the frame. These angle irons are pretty cool. I buy them when I go to the metal shop. I use them for all kinds of things. You see there I have representational pieces of wood, the same exact footprint of the table leg. This way I don't have to knock the table legs over while I'm trying to figure out the framework. And now right here the most important part of this frame is going to be this corner brace. That corner brace is going to hold the whole apron together, but also, most importantly, it's going to be the bolt-in section for the leg itself. And now here you see, just to be able to do repetitive cuts, I draw lines on my chop saw. do that a lot. And now here I am, I'm just kind of feeling and making sure that we're in the right spot. I had to adjust my little mark there, so I see two. So once I got my mark, I made sure it was the same everywhere. And I put that in, and I make sure that my leg my leg being represented by those two squares the proportions are all right I want the legs to be proud of the apron by about a half inch on both sides and I'm just nailing it together you might think that this isn't strong enough but I came up with this idea to avoid having to do dados and stuff by just layering everywhere everything gets double layered and as the layers are added separately they start to interlock so this whole entire table frame is just glued together for the most part, aside from those few tack nails you see me used. So now you see there on the, uh, that corner brace is trapped by two pieces of wood. And there you see I'm, I'm matching all the angles. And now this is going to be the other end of the apron. And I'm confident now that I tested the other side that I know I'm going to be okay. So I don't need to use my little pieces of wood anymore. And everything is just glued and clamped. And then I'll start filling in all the voids around the, the two long sides with extra pieces of wood. So what I'm doing here is I'm trapping everything in layers. And it ended up becoming extremely strong. Needless to say, once all those glue joints, all those glue surfaces began to dry. And plus having snug fits and things pushing against one another helps tremendously as well. And uh, now, mo most importantly, where the bolts are going to hold the legs on, I decided to use Baltic birch. And here you see I've cut a few pieces of Baltic birch just to secure the whole end. And that's because those bolts need to have a good base. And just going into that knotty pine certainly isn't going to be strong enough. So now with a layer of knotty pine, just to give it some girth, and then the Baltic birch plywood, which is a multi-layer plywood with no voids in it, 11 plies glued, dried, it's going to give it a tremendous amount of strength. Now I'm just cleaning up the frame. There's lots of glue everywhere. I'm just using a hand plane. When I plane glue, I use this old Stanley that I have. But once the glue is gone, I use the, the more refined planes. Just palm sanding, getting rid of any kind of edges. That wood was bought at Home Depot here in America. We have a Home Depot and we have a, a knotty pine aisle. And those individual pieces with ten dollars each twelve feet long they were one by six and I cut them down to four and a half inches and now these are these old planks that of hemlock that I got at a sawmill in my upstate area those were about ten bucks each and I leave them outside so I always buy them and leave them outside for this job or a job just like this one so I want them to be weathered so they look like old barn planks, but in fact they've never been used for anything, they've just been outside for about two years. And there I'm using my German hand plane, 
to just get any of the bumps out to get those as close together as possible. Now you see this wood has a twist in it and <clears throat> trying to get that twist out. I'm forcing it onto the frame and you see how I, I use the twist clamp there, the screw clamp. I use it all the time to pry things into place. Now here I am again using that German hand plane and just making sure we have a nice snug fit. Now I lay the boards out so the two outermost edges are as clean as possible because those again will be most often touched so I flip it around to get the good edge out. And there I'm using my new Varitas plane. I wanted to give it a shot and it is nice and thick and heavy so it really plows through the wood really nicely. You can see how it's doing. Nice easy job and sometimes you have bow in the middle, sometimes you have the edges touching and I'm just putting the individual pieces of wood down together so that as they live and breathe they'll live and breathe in their own space so if this tabletop goes in and out of the hot and cold each board is gonna expand and contract not the whole board itself so you'll get minute movement at each board as opposed to one big collective movement across all the boards that's what I like to do and uh, there, I just used my circular saw to clean cut the ends. I left about a 7 inch overhang, 6 inch overhang. And just hand sanding it. And uh, this was made for a friend. And I'm not sure exactly how she wants to handle it, but I'm going to let her do the final finish as far as the paint goes. I personally like it natural like that. It just gives it a real beautiful antique quality. But maybe a coat of water poly will do just to kind of hold those fibers in. And I just uh, palm sand these, the saw marks a little bit, get rid of some of the raised fibers, but also gives it a nice look. And I flip the table over and I realize there's a little twist in it. You can see that there. So here I bolt one edge to the table and I put a big chunk of spacer under there. And now I push down and that will over bend in the opposite direction. And that twist is primarily from the boards because the boards had some twisting in them. So that was my way of over twisting them. And now I'm drilling the holes. I do a 3 8 inch hole for this six inch long lag bolt and I use a smaller hole a quarter inch in the actual leg itself and believe it or not that is extremely strong I've done several of these tables and none of them have ever broken but when you move it around you need to be careful you don't want to put too much unnecessary abuse on dragging those legs around the top ended up coming out to be about 80 pounds and I'm just putting the bolts in slowly because you don't want to strip them and you get an amazingly strong joint right there with just that bolt. So it's a nice fit. Some people think maybe you need two bolts. Sometimes you can. You can use two if you want. But I'm afraid using two is going to make the leg itself susceptible for splitting in that short five inch area. So again, I just put it in, drill it. And so now I move it up to the 3 8 inch to make room for the bolt. So then I'm using two sizes. And there you go, those legs are very, very, very sturdy. And the good thing about them is that they come off fairly easily. You just unscrew them and you can move the table around. But it's important to mark them. And you'll notice I, I mark exactly their location because they were sort of drilled by hand for each location. So it's important that you remember where they go. So one goes where two goes, where three goes, where three goes, and four goes where four goes. Th this way you know they're going to be okay. Now I take it apart and I'm ready to go back to the country. And there's some beauty shots in my backyard. And it was just before I was about to start downpouring so we were rushing to get these shots and we got some chickens to play around with. It was funny. And there's my house in desperate need of a paint job. And there's the table. Bear's having a little fun. <laughs> Shooing those chickens. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something.